I've got two pedals. I'm not going to tell you what the two pedals are, but I've got two pedals here. They're overdrives, I'll tell you that much. That are, to the best of our knowledge, identical, or as identical as possible. We've dialed in the knobs to make them, you know, as identical as possible, too. I'm going to do a little experiment. Kids, don't try this at home. I just did an experiment to one of them. You tell me, uh, when we do the pedal one, pedal two thing, which one, or tell me if they sounded identical still, which they might, so. <laughs> How many people here thought they still sounded basically the same? Yeah. Heard a very slight difference? Yeah. Okay, but, but really close, right? Yeah. Both st still sounded good, right? Yeah. All right, uh, give me another minute. <laughs> Okay, who thought they still sounded basically the same? Show of hands, please. Same, just audio. I heard the most difference on this one. You heard the most difference on this one? Okay. How much difference? Still pretty tiny? Real close, right? Who, who would say that, that there was a slight difference, but it was just a slight difference? Overwhelming, yeah, okay. Anybody would say that it's a major difference? One guy? Okay, you've got special ears. <laughs> no, it's a, you're entitled to that, it's all right. You're a drummer. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, here's what I was just doing. I took two identical Route 808 pedals I had to set the knobs just a hair different on them because, like I said earlier, there's plus minus 20% tolerance on pots, slight differences in the way knobs might be put on things like that, but you agreed at the beginning that they, were, they sounded identical for the most part. What I did was, the, these pedals had Texas Instrument TI uh, 4558 chips in them. First thing I did was I pulled out, on one of them, I pulled out the, uh, the TI 4558 and I put in a JRC 4558. Now, bear with me for those of you who haven't heard this mythology before. Some people say that the Texas Instruments 4558, and they usually talk about it like from a long time ago as if it's a tube, uh, was better than the JRC 4558. Both were used in the original TS-808 like we, like we used earlier. In fact, the one that Jerry McPherson loaned us has a JRC 4558 in it, and it's a golden one. Anyhow, the first, the first comparison that we did after we determined that they were basically identical was to compare it with a, JR, a TI with a JRC. You agreed, vast majority, that they still sounded basically the same. Subtle, slight differences maybe, but they sounded basically the same. After that, I switched it out for a TLC 2272 op amp chip. It sounded basically the same. Then I changed it out for a C4558 Magic Mojo. We tried it and it, well, it sounded basically the same. Um, after that, we used an LM833, which is a, a, a su supposedly a very low noise op amp. It sounded basically the same. Then we went to a JRC072, which is the same thing as a TL072. We used them ourselves in some of our other pedals. Didn't sound much different, did it? Finally, and this one was the most intriguing, and I think some of you heard more of a difference on this one, but again, it was in the subtle category. It was an MC14577 CMOS video amplifier op amp. It's not even an audio chip, it's a video chip. What we ended up finding out was the op amp chip has little to nothing to do with the overdrive sound. 
And that would, that would be just as true if you're using a TS9 or a TS808 or any of the many, many Tube Screamer clones or the Root 808. The, the magic mojo of the, of the overdrive circuit is not the op amp, obviously, as you've just found out. It's in the other components. You know, it's in how you do the clipping diodes. It's how it, especially what, ca what capacitors you use at what points in it. Um, how you arrange your tone stack. Huge difference, as, as any of you electronics guys would, would know. Those are the things that make the difference. You know, your gain setting, your gain setting resistor, and all that kind of thing. Those are the differences. Op amp? No, I don't think so. Uh, so let me, let me show you something else here. This, just to show you where the, the why, why we're doing this Mythbusters thing. We're doing the Mythbusters thing because, first of all, I was surprised because I believed all the myths for a long time. Um, but here's a, here's a quote off of... Uh, somebody's website, a, a guy who mods pedals. Uh, to those that follow us really closely, they may have noticed that our several year run of vintage JRC 4558 chips from 1982 have come to an end. By the way, the, the uh, JRC 4558 that's in Jerry McPherson's TS-808 over here is from 1973, just so you know. We went through thousands of them. Uh, well, we have tried to source some more, but we have only come up with fakes and forgeries. Well, that may be the case, but my question is, why would anybody fake, forge, or counterfeit a 15 cent op amp? That's how much they cost. Um, so from here on, our TS-808 mods will get the same great Texas Instruments TI RC4558P that we use in our TS-9 mods. We still feel that the TI chip is the best of the best. The vintage 82 JRCs we had were great and are a rare thing to have. Well, they're actually really not rare. And, and, and honestly, I, I talked. Uh, probably, I don't know, eight to ten years ago, I, I called up New Japan Radio Corporation, which is JR, JRC. And I talked with the lead engineer there, and I, I said, man, I keep hearing all this stuff about the JR, JRC 4558s and how, you know, they went out of, of production, and now, you know, you're making them again, but they're not as good as they used to be. And, and this is a senior engineer at, at JRC Company, New Japan Radio. He said, he said where, I don't know where you got that idea. We've been making these in steady production since the 70s. They've never been out of production. It's the same tooling. It's silicon, and it's, it's not tubes. You know, a vintage chip is still silicon. It doesn't degrade. It's not, it's not a vacuum tube, you know? Um, here's another quote from another website. In the 70s, Maxon used the JRC 4558 chip set. It's actually just a chip, not a set of chips. And successfully created a much sought after overdrive pedal. Uh, Soon after, Ibanez, Boss, and other brands started implementing the use of the chipset, making the JRC 4558 so famous. With better technology progress, we are now using higher quality JRC 4558 chips to get an even better sound. Sorry, but the senior engineer at Japan Radio Corporation might disagree with that. Here's another quote from another website. You cannot just use any JRC 4558 and expect to get that classic tone as the current production chips do not have the same electrical characteristics. Okay. This is why so many so-called copy tube screamers are poor sounding clones, leaving musicians disappointed. Were any of you disappointed here tonight in the different op amps I put in? Highly. Highly. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, thanks, Phil. OK. The main component of any solid state distortion device is the op amp, which gives distortion its flavor. I, I might have a different opinion on that. Later production TS9 tube screamers stopped using the JRC 4558 chips, changing the sound fairly dramatically depending on which chip was used in its place. Now, yes, TS9s do vary in sound like any other pedal. You know, from one, if, again, if you set all the knobs at 12 o'clock and expect them to sound the same, well, you're in for a disappointment most of the time. They're, they're gonna, there's going to be a little knob tweaking you got to do to get the same sound out of two, uh, two pedals that are the same make and model but you know, from two different production runs, things like that. Um, the op amp, I, I don't think it has a lot to do with it. So a little bit of Mythbusters there for you, guitar style. All right? Thank you.